welcome to another episode of uh, Bigfoot BS with uh, Bill and Sam. Uh, Sam Deloach is normally the one in front of the camera and I'm behind the camera, but uh, Sam had a family emergency and was unable to make the trip with me up here to Whitville today to uh, speak with uh, the Sasquatch outlaw himself, Mr. Tracy Arnold. Uh, so in his absence, uh, I'm uh, going to go ahead and uh, just speak with Tracy here real quick and just kind of tell us uh, what you do, what you're involved in, and uh, and then we'll get into your encounter. But uh, let the folks at Bigfoot BS know uh, who you are and what you do. All right, uh, name's uh, Tracy Arnold. Uh, I've got the uh, New River Valley Bigfoot Organization on the uh, Facebook page, and uh, you also catch it uh, Sasquatch Outlaw on the uh, YouTube channel. And uh, I'm just a researcher uh, looking for answers and uh, just out uh, enjoying uh, nature too. All right. Well, good deal. I'm actually anxious to hear this other part because I've heard uh, just little uh, bits of it and whatnot, but I understand you've had an encounter. And uh, if you could just kind of tell us about the encounter, uh, where, when it was, where it was, and, and give us the details of your encounter. Okay. Uh, back in the September of 2015, uh, it was uh, early morning. The fog was kindly, kindly on pretty heavy that morning, and I was in the Giles County, Virginia, uh, borderline of uh, West Virginia, and uh, I had been of our work and, and I had a lot of time to kill, so I went and uh, looked into a couple of the BFRO reports from uh, White Rocks area, and uh, well, what got me up there, that's what the reports was, and uh, uh, I went up there probably two, two or three hours, uh, looking around some campsites where I had actually had a report come to myself from a different person and uh, I looked around and found some different things and uh, actually wrote it off as human because it was you know the trees you know tree breaks sticks piled up stuff like that so kind of wrote it off and uh, you know enjoyed the morning and uh, on my way up the mountain I noticed that there was a spot uh, uh, on the side of the road it's a pull off spot kind of like this area <clears throat> and it had a creek and uh, someone had told me it had a waterfall and uh, also had the Nature Walks photos uh, Facebook page. And I thought, well, I need a waterfall picture. So I figured I'd stop on my way to back and uh, uh, take this picture of the waterfall. So I get down through the mountain and get out and start walking down a trail. And, you know, I didn't go very far, you know, at first, you know, trying to snap different pictures. And I couldn't get a really good picture. So I just kept going a little further and I kept getting closer to the waterfall. And, uh, as took one picture and I kept hearing the waterfall get a little, you know, a little bit better. And uh, it was like maybe a hundred yards from the road uh, where I had got out at, about this far from the road, and uh, I could hear it clear as the day, you know, clear as the day, the waterfall, and uh, I heard a snap, a crack off to my right, and uh, it's get you yeah, a picture. This a laurel thicket on your right, a uh, big creek on your left and uh, every now and then the laurels will be on both sides of you and some parts of the laurel would have little breaks in them where you could see plumb through to the other laurel and uh, well as uh, I heard that I put it off as a deer you know deer probably running off or something and uh, I went up a little further probably about another 26 yards and uh, I got frozen my foot tracks my footsteps I just froze my right foot was on the ground. Uh, as uh, I was froze, I was looking this way, and then I turned my head, and in between the laurels, there stood a, well, it squatted down. I figured that out later, but it was a very wide creature, uh, covered in hair, uh, facial features the same as mine. It was shocked, like I was. I was in shock that I was looking at this. Uh, it was more human what I thought and what in my opinion is uh, more human than it is you know anything else it may have its own you know it's got a it's 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 its own species is all I can say because the actions was not of a primate the actions was of a human but it also had primate characteristics but it had human characteristics as well so really it cannot be, I cannot tie it as a human 
or a primate because it had so much of both. Uh, I actually seen his face, his, his arms were draped down beside of it, but the knoll that I was looking over actually went up and over. And you know, later I went back and found out that it flattened off on the other side of the knoll. It had to been down on its knees. So actually, you know, after looking at it, it was squatted down hunting. Hmm. And it wasn't expecting a human to come through. Hmm. Uh, what, uh, what color was it? Uh, reddish brown. Reddish brown? Reddish brown. About how tall do you think it was now that you know it was squatted down and you went back to the area? The estimation was about seven and seven and a half feet. Did you find any tracks or anything? No. I did not stick in the area the day of the sighting. I got out you know, pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I kind of treated it as a burr. Mm -hmm. I backed out to where I couldn't see it, spun around, then hit the camera. Instead of trying to get a picture of it, like I, I had planned, you know, on maybe even I had something in my pocket that day that I was going to offer, you know, you know, lay it down and walk away and then go back and see if it took it. But my mind couldn't comprehend what I was seeing and everything went out the window as far as what I had planned. Well, it was something big just fell out of that tree over there. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was just weird. Sorry, folks, but... Literally, there's a big branch or something just fell out of that tree when That's you said that. Cool. That was wild. Um, Don't get me well, out of here. Uh, out of here. <laughs> that, uh, that, was, uh, that, that was fascinating. Uh, and uh, didn't you say that uh, you had made a report maybe with the BFRO or something yes, because I Cliff actually, Brackman had <clears throat> noticed it or something? Yes, I actually uh, reported. Uh, it took me a while to report to the BFRO because at the time that I had my sighting, you know, I try to stay clear of the BFRO because I heard that everything that you report or everything you investigate, they keep. Uh, but I thought, you know, at that time when I started looking more into the people in the BFRO, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Russell Jones, Russ Jones, uh, uh, Charles Kimber, Kimber, Kimbrew, uh, I, you know, I started talking to them guys a little bit and they wanted me to be a part of the BFRO. Uh, but, you know, money is, you know, something you have to have to be a member mm -hmm. and you know to be a truthful person a truthful researcher you have to be offered you know you got to be offered to be in the BFR you just can't go in and say okay this is what I got you know here's the money I'm, I'm, I'm your researcher so I'm not going to spend a lot of money on something I can do myself mm -hmm. you know without having to pay a big, mm -hmm. big portion just to have reports did uh, your encounter did you just simply think uh, it was as shocked as you? Did you feel uh, scared, nervous, any kind of aggressive you know, aggression or anything? Or was it just simply a, both of you were shocked and you were acting like a hunter in the wood with a bear and backing away? Well, it was more fear. I didn't know what this thing was going to be doing to me or what it could do to me. Uh, it could have been on me in two steps. Uh, How far away was it from you? Uh, the actual measurement that I got from the site was 26 feet. Wow. And I didn't smell nothing. That was a surprise. Wow. Huh. Well, and that's something else. That was 26 feet. I mean, from here to the other side of that. Yeah, area. that's that's, that's not, not far place. at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And the you know, creature is wide as my front end of my Jeep. Yeah, I was going to say, about how big was it? So it, it literally, literally was... Literally, it took up the whole space between the two rolls. Wow. Yeah. And then, the, you know, there was things about the area when I went back. It took me over a year to go back, a year, almost a year and a half to go back. And I, I dummy went by myself to do all this measure. So, and that's how I came up with seven to seven and a half feet tall. Wow. Well, that's a, that's a interesting story for sure. Uh, Tracy, uh, thank you for sharing that with us. If you would, let the folks know where they can find you and follow you on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. If you'll just let right. them know, we'd appreciate it. It's, uh, Tracy Arnold, I'm on uh, Facebook as, uh, uh, I'm on YouTube as Sasquatch Outlaw, and uh, you can also check out the newer Valley Bigfoot organization on the Facebook page. All and right. Sasquatch Outlaw on Twitter as well. All right, well, thank you. And uh, prayers for Sam and his family uh, with uh, the, what they're going through. And uh, anyways, uh, Sam should be back for the next episode. and. Uh, Keep uh, keep watching, and what is it you always say? Sam, praying for you, buddy, and your family, and keep it real. All right.